Hello and welcome to my tutorial. This tutorial will demonstrate a method in building a basic inventory for your game using the Godot game engine. Do be noted, that I am particularly using the Godot engine version 2.1.4, which is the latest stable release available during the time I have been making this video. Before we start, we must first procure and organize our game assets. For this tutorial, we will be using a public domain asset package by Kenny Assets. I will provide the necessary links, in the description, below. These assets will serve as our item icons for our inventory, it will graphically represent each items that would be available in our game world. In this case, our downloaded assets, the image files, in which are to be used as item icons, are not of the same pixel dimensions, but not to worry, we can cater to this when we start programming our inventory. Now, in my game inventory folder, I will create a new folder and will name it as, Project Player Inventory. This folder will contain the project files such as our scripts and game resources, which will be generated by the Godot game engine. Now, after all our required assets are in place and our project folder has been created, let us now begin using the Godot game engine. We start by creating a new project. You can name your project any way you wish, but for my case, I shall name it as, Project Underscore Player Inventory. Now, I shall set my project path to the directory that I have previously created. It is the same directory where I have placed my game image assets. After the newly created project loads we shall immediately switch to 2D mode, because working in the 3D space is irrelevant for this particular tutorial. Then, we create a default node. This will be the default parent node of all our future nodes in this particular scene. Now, let us save our current scene. To keep our files organized, I will be creating a separate folder inside our project's resource folder in which I shall name as, Scenes. The Scenes folder shall store all files that we identify to be as scenes. This current scene shall be our player's inventory, therefore I will be naming it as, Scene underscore player inventory, for the sake of easier reference. Now, remember the assets we have placed just one folder before our project folder? In my case, the assets folder name is, PNG, and it contains all of our image assets which we will use as item icons for our inventory items. For us to be able to use these assets inside our game engine, we would need to import them within the engine's folder structure. There are two ways to import our image assets. One is to simply copy and paste the asset folder into the project folder which is the resource folder. And two, is to use Godot's import utility. For this tutorial we will be importing our assets using the built-in import utility. To do this, we simply click on the import button and select texture. Then, choose the option for the import mode to, 2D texture. Now, on the source texture, we simply navigate to the directory of our image assets. While holding down the left shift key, we then select using the mouse, all the image assets we wish to import. Now, for our target path, under the resource folder, I will create another folder and shall name it as, item underscore icons. As a personal preference of mine, I would change the texture format to, compress lossless PNG, to preserve the image assets quality upon import.
After importing our assets, the next step is optional, I will change the display size of the game. Click to access the scene menu button, then click project settings, under project settings window, choose the display section, toggle to check and activate the width and height properties, then set the following values, width to 800 and height to 450. Now, we will begin to construct our inventory interface, while selecting our default parent node to set it to active, we will add a child panel node. I will resize the panel node to fit our display size. Under the panel node, I will add a child node of type, item list. I will set the item list size values to 720 by 380. Now, to have an idea of how the item inventory will look like, let us now begin the programming for populating our item list with our previously imported item icons. First, let us create our first script. To do this, select the default parent node, now click the right mouse button and choose attach script. Navigate to the resource directory and create a new folder, in my case, I shall name the new folder as, scripts, the scripts folder will contain all our script files. Now, I shall name the script file as script underscore player inventory, then save it inside the scripts folder. Now, I will declare and initialize a variable that will reference to our item list node. We do this by adding the keyword on ready and we reference the node using the get underscore node function and set the parameters to the nodes path. To easily get the nodes path, select our item list node from the nodes hierarchy, then right click mouse button and select, copy node path. Then, paste on the get underscore node functions parameter. Now, let us initialize the properties of our item list inside the underscore ready function. We will now set the maximum number of columns that will be shown on our item list. This is of course, dependent on the width of the item list and the dimensions of the icons that will be shown, but shall not exceed the max columns in which, I will set with the value of 9. Now, remember our image assets not being of the same dimensions, we will now fix this by setting the property fixed icon sizes parameters with a vector 2D of 48 by 48. This will ensure that our icons inside the item list, will not exceed the dimensions of 48 by 48 pixels therefore preserving visual consistency regardless of the imported image size. Now let us set the icon's orientation. By setting item list property, icon mode, to icon mode top, this will mean that the icon will always show above and before its following text label. Now let us set the item list property selection mode. We will set it to select single, meaning, the item list will prevent multiple selection of icons or items, even if the player is holding the shift key. Though in some cases, it is better to have the capability for multiple selection, like for example, dropping or removing multiple items in the inventory all at the same time. And finally, we will ensure that all column widths for each item are equal throughout the item list, by setting the item list property, set same column width, to the value of true. Now, I will declare a variable named as, icon, which will load the image we wish to assign to the item and store it to this variable. We load the image using, resource loader.load, 
or you could simply type it as load. We then place the file path of the resource we wish to load on the resource loader load parameter. To do that, we simply right mouse button click on the image we wish to use from the file explorer then click on copy path. Then paste the path on the parameter. We will now then instantiate an item and add it to our existing item list with the following parameters. We can now test if the icon will appear on our item list, but before we do that, we must first assign our main scene from the project settings. To do that, we must access our project settings. On the applications section, toggle the main scene property checkbox to activate, then assign our scene underscore player inventory from our scenes folder. Let us now test run the project. And, there it is. Now let us populate the item list using all available images that we have previously imported. To do that, we would need to use a for loop in range, with parameters, 1 to 164. Why the domain of 1, and a range of 164? Because we have a total of 163 images and therefore, we would need to add one to the range, meaning our for loop variable i, will increment starting from 1 to 163, disregarding the 164th iteration. For further explanation, I suggest you refer to the Godot Game Engine's official documentation. At this point you may need to pause the video from time to time to be able to copy the codes that I would be typing. We are doing this, because we would need the incrementing value of the variable i, we will be concatenating i, to the icon variable's resource path using its value. Of course this is only possible because of the way the image files has been named. Now, let us test our code. And, there they are, we now have all 163 icons shown on the item list. Though there is one problem. They look too congested. We would need to have more spacing in between each icons. To fix that, we would need to adjust some item list properties in the inspector, particularly the horizontal and vertical separation, and the line separation, I will set each property with the value of 30 units. There, much better. This now concludes the first part of this tutorial series. In the next video, we will be working on the item database, where we will indicate unique item properties such as, item name, item price, weight, and so on. Thank you for watching this tutorial, subscribe and enable the bell icon notification to keep you posted of the latest video uploads. Leave a comment below if you have any questions or suggestions. See you soon.